seating arrangements. How do you sit in your meeting? Well, again, not super important. Not, I mean, uh, you know, it's not worth debating over. You know, if you want to have pews, if you want to have benches where the people face the, the one who's speaking, the man that's speaking, okay. Uh, usually we just use the chairs in our living room. And you position them so that everybody's looking at the speaker. Again, you don't want to have people facing away from the speaker. You want them to be looking towards the speaker. Um, not like I, like I said, it's not super important. Okay, you can get folding chairs. You can use the chairs if you don't have that many people. Just use your regular living room. Sit around the kitchen table. Whatever. Go out in the woods and sit on rocks and stumps and logs. It's fine. Not not that important of an issue. But what about a pulpit? Uh, there again, not a big issue, not a big thing. I don't, I don't agree with putting the pulpit way up, you know, on a pedestal so the preacher's far above everybody else. I'd avoid that. Uh, but as far as should a preacher, should the preacher be standing or seated? Well, I think you're better off to stand because it helps your voice to project better. And again, you don't have to be yelling or screaming or putting on a show up there. You're, you're there to teach the people. Okay, you're not there to bust their eardrums. Um, but a lot of times we sit down. We've been doing this now for a long time. We sit down at a little table. Here's a picture of it right here. And uh, you can see I'm sitting there. And you can see why I'm sitting there. Because I have everything all spread out. And... Uh, just as I'm doing right here, right now, I have a lot of information that's right here that I can get to. And now, to have that as the surface of a pulpit that I stand behind would be, <laughs> that'd be a lot. So, usually I have sermon notes. Here are my notes for this video. So, usually you're better off, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's again, it's not a big issue. Uh, whether you want to have, if you want to have the pulpit where you stand behind it, or if you just want to have a little card table like we use, we've been using now for a long time, um, it's really up to the individual. Okay, in this section, I want to talk to you about music. Uh, first thing that you should do as a small house church is get some hymn books you can go to a used bookstore a lot of times they'll have these the the churches today are getting rid of the traditional hymns so they're usually not too hard to find um, there probably are some some that you can buy yet online uh, that are newer buy them as you need them but we were able to get some good old traditional hymn books that have the old hymns in them uh, that's another thing that you want to stay away from. Avoid the modern music like a plague. If you don't know about that, you can write to us here at uh, uh, Bible Believers Fellowship or King James Video Ministries and we'll give you plenty of information warning you about the modern contemporary Christian music. But uh, get some good old hymn books like this that have the old hymns in them, the old rugged cross, amazing grace, you know, hymns like that. Uh, what about instruments? Well, there are some people that uh, swear by a cappella because there are no instruments mentioned in the New Testament. That's fine. We sing a cappella, but it's because, not because we're against instruments, it's just we don't have anybody to play anything. Uh, we don't have anybody with musical talent. Now, if the Lord provides us with somebody that can play, uh, stick to stringed instruments. Or if you have somebody that is musically talented, Stick to stringed instruments, okay? A piano is technically a stringed instrument. Um, guitar, piano, something that will play music in a reverent sort of a way. Of course, you can have, you know, brass instruments too, I guess, if you really uh, feel led to do that. Um, of course, a keyboard would also be a good option. Uh, there again, don't go out and buy some big couple thousand dollar grand piano or something like that for your services. You don't need it. Okay, uh, you can get by with a little electrical keyboard. 
So whether you want to have instruments or not, not is, is again, not a huge issue, but stick to the old traditional hymns. Uh, hymns usually come before preaching. I don't recommend not having a hymn before preaching. It just, I think it gets your, you in the right mood. It gets you into the right state of mind to sing a hymn and to think about what you're singing. And the old hymns, that's why I recommend them because there's so much in them doctrinally. So it's almost kind of a pre-sermon sermon. Uh, many times some of the old hymns are, are just phenomenal with their lyrics. Uh, the, that's why I'm against the new music a lot of times because it's just repetition. Uh, it's, it's a couple words and you repeat it. There's an old statement, there's 7-Eleven songs. Seven words and you repeat them 11 times. There's a lot of truth to that. Uh, and of course you can also sing a hymn after the service is over as well. That's also a good practice, a good thing to get into. Alright, let's move on to the next section. All right, preaching and teaching the Word of God. Um, well, if you want to start a house church, it could be that you are a fairly new Christian and you are smart enough to be able to see the corruption in the modern big churches, uh, the, the whole church movement thing. But if you're not really grounded in doctrinal issues, what do you do? I mean, you don't really qualify to be a preacher uh, if you're not really grounded in the things of the Lord. Uh, the Bible does warn about a novice. I'm going to get into that here in a little bit. So what do you do if you are a novice and you are in an area where there isn't any good preaching? Well, fortunately, we still have a tremendous tool on the Internet. There are thousands of sermons that can be downloaded, and you can learn a lot. So if you are a novice, if you are a beginning Christian, there's no shame in that. We were all novices at, at some point you can get on the internet and download some preaching and that can actually be your service. You can listen to a message from a man that is preaching out of the King James Bible. Make sure he's preaching out of a King James Bible. If he's using new versions, if he's correcting the King James Bible with what he calls the Greek, uh, avoid him. Shut him off. Okay. There's no reason to question this book. This book's been around for almost 400 years now the best preachers that are out there can find plenty of things to say from this book without having to change it or attack it. Okay, anybody that changes it or attacks it, scratch them. <laughs> you don't want to listen to them. Okay, they're a hypocrite. All right, because a lot, of a lot of times they'll say that this is God's Word or God's Word says to you today and then they correct it. And that's a problem there. So make sure that if you're listening to somebody, to a man preaching, Make sure he's quoting the King James Bible, reading out of the King James Bible. Um, and, of course, whatever they're preaching, make sure you check it with the King James Bible. When they say, you know, the Bible says, and they give you a reference, go to that reference and look it up. Okay, even if you have to pause it and everybody get to it, everybody's there, okay, unpause it and let the guy continue preaching. But make sure that this is your standard. Very important. Okay, um, and of course, as I stated earlier, absolutely no female preachers. I don't care if one of the women in the, in the group really feels burdened to bring forth a message or something. No, the Bible teaches very clearly against female preachers. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 says, let the, women, or let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Okay? No female preachers. Right? The women, God has a special role for you. It's not that God's putting you down and it's some kind of male chauvinism. Uh, God has a special purpose for you. But it's not to be an instructor and a teacher of men. Okay? The man is to be the teacher. There are no female preachers. 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14, verses 34 through 35 says, 
Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Okay, when you come together, the women are to remain silent. That does not mean that they can't call for, that they can't say something after the service has ended or whatever. It means when you are up there delivering the message, a woman's not to say, yeah, but I have a question or... No. It's what the Bible teaches. Okay. Very important to remember that. Now, if a man is experienced enough to preach, uh, he should speak about subjects that Christians need to know about, that the group needs to know about, and that will help you in getting the truth out to other people. You're to commit the things that you have been taught, the things that you have learned, you're to commit it to others so that they can teach other people. That's the purpose of it. So when you preach, it should be about relevant subjects. It should be about things that people need to be convicted of and you need to be convicted of too. A lot of times a preacher isn't willing to preach to himself. That shouldn't be that way. A preacher should be preaching to people, to the congregation, but also to himself. Um, now as far as a weeknight Bible study, uh, it's not quite the same thing. Uh, we do have, while we're doing it, it's always the men that are reading the Bible and that are following the main um, discussion. It's an informal Bible study. And the way we do it, um, we pick one chapter of the Bible. We're going through, or a book of the Bible, excuse me. We pick a, bit, a book of the Bible and... Right now we're going through 2 Corinthians. We already went through 1 Corinthians. We've gone through other books. But we're going through 2 Corinthians right now. And we will read verse by verse through an entire chapter. And then we will discuss it as we're going through. And being a little bit more informal, we do allow the women to ask, you know, hey, what does this mean? Or, you know, could I just say, it, it kind of looks over at this verse here. Not the same thing as a preacher getting up and specifically exhorting and preaching to the people. Okay, so that's what we have to say about that. All right, let's move on to the next subject.